Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Sanchez, artist at CG Sketch. Today we're going to talk about using image-based lighting systems. In other words, lighting up your scenes using an image. Traditionally, we use HDRIs. For those of you that don't know, HDRI stands for High Dynamic Range Images. They're basically, basically images that have been taken with multiple exposure levels and combined together to create an HDR. And um, so as you can see here, these this scene particularly was rendered using an HDRI image and um, it creates lovely reflections, really nice um, sky, sky lighting and also if the image is good enough, direct illumination from the sun. You can use it to, to render out um, darker scenes such as uh, evenings or um, afternoons and the results can be quite stunning if done correctly. Um, so let's talk about how to do it. First of all, not all HDRIs are created equal. So we'll talk about later on what makes a, what differentiates a low quality HDRI from a higher quality HDRI. And let me tell you guys where I get my HDRIs from. So hands down, the best pack, the best set that you could get your hands on right now as of um, 2020 is gonna be from right here, 3D Collective. Um, the gentleman that runs this site, his name is uh, Adam Martin. He has a YouTube channel. I highly recommend you um, subscribe if you know Spanish. But he created this excellent pack, second pack that just recently came out. Cost 225 euros, translates to around $250, uh, but totally worth its weight in gold. So if you guys make a living out of this, it, uh, it's an investment that will pay for itself easily. Now, there are quite a few free HDR sites available, like this one here, HDRI Haven. And the um, gentleman that runs this site offers a lot of um, options, different times of day, and they are completely free. Uh, he does take donations. So, I mean, if you like what, uh, what you use from here, highly recommend you uh, give him a tip and um, that'll uh, hopefully help him keep going. There's also this site here, HDRmaps, hdrmaps.com. Okay, so let's see how do we light up our scenes using HD our eyes so I have here the scene that I was just showing you guys and really it's there's nothing to it the process is extremely simple so we're gonna start by creating a dome light place it right there and that's how there's to it now we're gonna um, bring in a V-Ray bitmap it used to be called this I'm running V-Ray 5 on the previous versions of V-Ray V-Ray was called V-Ray HDRI map um, but on this version is a very bitmap and then you would just have it right here already. You would just select the HDR you want to use. In this case, um, I'm using this one from 3D Collective. Um, you would make sure it's in spherical and then you would just tie that texture up to the dome light. So we have the dome light selected here and we could just bring it in to the texture slot. Create an instance. There you go. Now, if you want to be able to rotate the dome and rotate thus the map, you could click on lock texture to icon right here, which I'll do as soon as uh, 3D Studio Max is done auto saving. Okay, so we click lock texture to icon. And now if I rotate this dome, it'll rotate the map. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like from this camera. I have already a camera on the scene. We'll adjust the settings for the camera later. So let's bring this in here and let's let's see what that looks like. Okay, as you can see here, the image is a bit too bright. And that is because we have to adjust the camera exposure. So let's go ahead and do that. I got the camera selected. Let's go to settings and let's darken it up a bit. So let's go to try eight, 10, still too bright, 12 EVs, perfect. And now let's uh, lower the highlight burn using the post processing available in the frame buffer. Um, you could use do this via Photoshop or you could do this in the frame buffer. I like to use these settings here to preview the image before I take it to post. So I've lowered the highlight burn and right there you can pretty much see that is it. That's all there's to it. I mean, the images, the scene is being um, lit up by the HDRI we just placed on there, and we could easily, we could easily rotate the 
the map by coming here to the um, light dome and just rotating it since we clicked on um, lock icon as we had shown. Now, if we want to change the HDRI again, all we would do is just bring in the new HDRI and just tag it to the texture slot. And we'll see the results. There you go. So that's a new HDRI. And again, we could simply rotate it if we need to. Um, the exposure levels are pretty similar, so I don't even have to tweak the camera. And that's it, guys. It's really that simple. It doesn't matter if it's a, a noon a shot or an afternoon or dusk or evening or dawn. It's really that simple. You get the really nice reflections from the HDRI um, and the great illumination. Now, these are really high quality HDRIs. And let's see what the difference is between when I say a low quality HDRI and a high quality image. So if we come over here to Photoshop, I have here the HDRI I was just using to illuminate the scene from 3D Collective. And you'll see here if I lower the exposure that the image has a really high dynamic range. As I lower the exposure, the sun is still nice and bright and clearly visible. And you can measure how much range there is in this image easily by um, getting, uh, clicking on the color picker, clicking on the brightest spot of the image. We have 18.45 stops and then go into a lower, uh, a darker area of the image. And that takes us down to under three. So we easily have here around 15, 16 um, different exposure levels in this image, which is excellent. On a bright, sunny day, you're going to want at least 13, 14, 15 different exposure levels taken on your uh, HDRI in order to create accurate uh, lighting, sharp, uh, sharp shadows, and accurate representation of the scene when it was taken. Um, now, let's see the difference between an image that doesn't have as much dynamic range. I have here a different HDRI, and this one um, seems to be fine when you first look at it, but when you lower the exposure, right away you can tell that as I lower the exposure, the sun starts dimming out immediately, which tells me right away that this image does not have that, that high of a dynamic range. So the person that took this image probably took only a few exposures and combined them. And if we actually check it, let's see here, the same way we did the other way uh, with the other image, click on the bright spot here, we have 4.40. And if we come back here to the darker spot, we have zero. So this image has barely uh, five stops uh, differentiating the brightest from darkest areas, which is not nearly enough. Let's see what happens when we try illuminating are seen with a lower quality HDRI like this. So if you come here back to 3D Studio Max, I have um, that HDRI here ready in place, the lower quality one, select the dome. All right, here it is. And let's go ahead and tag it here. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, here it is. And right away, what you can tell is that the image has no contrast whatsoever. Most of the illumination is coming from the sky, the blue of the sky, and hardly any from the sun because the sun is just too dim. There's no sharp shadows. I mean, the, the whole scene just does not look like what the original scene when the image was taken should look like. Here we see sharp shadows, and we should have shadows like that on our image, but we don't. We have something kind of dim and washed out. So a lot of times what people used to do back in the day, they would come on here and they would go to the inverse gamma, gamma and try to mess with this, say 0.75, and that would brighten the image up and it'd have slightly more contrast in the image. But that really, I, I don't recommend that system. I mean, that just wrecks the image. It changes the exposure of the image. It makes some areas brighter. And, and again, we still don't have really any sharp shadows the the, the most of the lighting is coming from the from the sky so what i recommend what we can do in circumstances like this when we're working with hdris that perhaps don't have as much dynamic range as it should is paint the sun ourselves so if we come back here to photoshop let's go ahead and paint the added dynamic range by um by just painting in the sun so we said that we had four versus zero and we want at least 14 steps of difference, right? So um, let's make 
let's add 10 stops of difference to the sun. So if you come here and we just uh, right here type in, uh, actually let's make it 14 because we have a zero here and 14. So we have at least 14 steps of difference between dark and, and bright. So let's make it 14 stops and let's just come in here and paint our sun just like that. You could do it on a separate layer if you want. I just undoed Control Z for undo and I'm doing it. I'm painting the sun on a new, la new layer just like so. And now what happens is we've just painted on a brighter sun on the image. So now that when you dim the image, we can still see that the sun is still bright. And what that's going to allow is for 3D Studio Max to, and for V-Ray to um, understand that this area is brighter and will create sharper shadows. Let's go test it out. So, oh, of course you would save it. So you would uh, save as, and of course you would come on here as a HDR and save it. I've already saved it under the name high contrast. So let's go on here and see the difference. So if we go to high contrast, which is the one I just created where I painted the sun. And if we drag and drop this into the texture slot of the V-Ray light dome, now let's see the difference. So you see, now we have a, a scene that more accurately represents what was uh, visible in the HDRI original scene, a lighting similar to, to this. Because we've painted on a sharp sun, we've added a little bit more dynamic range to the image, and therefore the uh, V-Ray can use that information to understand that there's a bright sun in that area and it'll create uh, more sharper shadows and something that looks a little bit more similar to, uh, or more accurately to real life, more representative of real life. So, I mean, this is something you could do if you're working with lower quality HDRs, but again, there's, there, the, the selection is getting better and better online. Like I, the sites I've showed you guys that you could use um, are gonna present you with some really nice HDRs. Take them and study them. Once you download HDR, take them into Photoshop and study them the way I showed you. See how, much, how many exposure difference levels, how many stops there are between brightest and darkest areas. Uh, and again, sunny days, you're gonna want at least 12, 13, 14 or above. And um, you know, at darker scenes like afternoons or cloudy days, um, you're gonna want between six, eight, ten different stop levels. And that's it, guys. That's really all this two-way. Once you understand these concepts, you could use this to illuminate your scenes beautifully and, and easily. And um, I hope this tutorial has been useful for you guys. If you have any questions or comments, as usual, drop them below. And thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you.